This is a crystal radio set that I decided to build. It's made mostly out of just scrap pieces of wood and uh, some cardboard cartons, aluminum foil, and one diode. I found this Bureau of Standards document on the internet called Construction and Operation of a Two-Circuit Radio Receiving Equipment with Crystal Detector. It's dated July 17, 1922. Sold for five cents at the time. Anyway, this circular gives detailed instructions on how to build this crystal radio, so if you're interested in trying to build one, go get this circular off the uh, internet and uh, read it and then it'll have all the information you need to build the radio. For people that aren't familiar with crystal radios, they go way back to the beginning of radio. Uh, <clears throat> when radio first came out in the 1920s, a lot of people didn't even have electric power. So even though radios were being uh, built with vacuum tubes and so forth, or battery pa and used battery power or electric power. A lot of people either didn't have electric power or uh, didn't want to spend the money to buy the radios because they were expensive. This is an alternative to uh, you know a powered radio. These radios do not use any electrical power at all. They are completely powered. They get their energy from the antenna. And so with these radios, having a long antenna outdoors is very important. Now, I don't have a long antenna outdoors. I've got 50 feet of wire laid out in my house right now. So the reception on this radio could be improved a lot by putting an antenna outside. Anyway, the basic parts of the radio are there are two coils to this radio. This coil is wound on a uh, oatmeal box, and this second coil is wound on a salt box. And the circular describes how many turns uh, to put on each coil, and uh, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a lot of taps on these, on these coils so that by turning these knobs, you can adjust how many of the coils you are using because these little brass screws are connected to the taps. This coil here also has taps on it and there's a knob over here with a little wiper blade that I made out of copper that you can uh, go back and forth. This one has 18 taps and this one has 6. It's also possible to move these two coils. I can move this coil in and out of this coil and that changes the tuning of the radio. So you've got your two coils, you've got an antenna coming in, uh, it's important to have a ground. I have this connected to the uh, electrical ground in my house. Radios also have a capacitor that's used to help tune them. Uh, this capacitor I made out of uh, a paper towel roll uh, with a piece of aluminum foil on it, and then this is just a piece of a computer printer paper wrapped around it with some more foil and by sliding these two tubes in and out you can change the amount of uh, capacitance. Now the old style crystal radios had a crystal detector which was a little piece of a, a semiconductor that looked kind of like a rock and then there was a cat's whisker which was a springy piece of wire that went down on top of it and by moving it around you could pick up radio stations. Instead of doing that I just went ahead and bought uh, a germanium diode. This one is a type 1N34 germanium diode. You cannot use uh, silicone diodes be because they have too much uh, voltage drop across them. So if you use a diode you have to use a germanium diode. <clears throat> These two uh, clips here is where you would hook your headphones on. Right now I have it connected to this little powered loudspeaker to make it easier to hear.
Now it turns out that I have a what I'll call a flamethrower AM radio station located here in Manassas about two miles from where I live. It's a Spanish speaking uh, radio station and because of that during the day uh, that station tends to overpower everything else. There's another station in Leesburg, Virginia that's a 50,000 watt AM station that I can sometimes pick, pick up. I had that tuned in when I started this video. In a second here I'm going to turn up the volume on the speaker and we'll see if we can still hear it. So the way you tune this radio is by basically changing the taps on the coils uh, you use this is the coarse tune and here's the fine tune for the big coil and then the smaller coil has these six positions over here that's also used to tune it you use the capacitor to tune it and you also slide this coil in and out to tune it so you've got all these different ways of tuning the radio and one thing I've noticed is the strong stations will show up at multiple places across the dial so <clears throat> There's different ways of tuning it that will uh, allow you to hear the same station in different places across the dial. The now I think this station is the station in Leesburg. Uh, hope, hopefully you can hear that and what I'll do is I'll just move this coil just a little bit and you, if you listen you'll see how it changes the tuning. There's the flamethrower station. There's another station I'm able to pick up. Now at night, I've noticed that I can pick up a lot of different stations and to tell you the truth, I'm not even sure where they're all located. Last night I picked up one in South Carolina. Some of the stations I'm picking up at night don't even, I'm not even sure they're even in the standard AM broadcast band. They might, they might be shortwave stations that I'm picking up uh, because some of those stations, if you listen to them, they, hard, they only uh, broadcast their call letters like maybe once an hour. Whereas, you know, normal commercial AM stations tend to tell you who they are constantly. So anyway, Anyway, that's the uh, simple crystal radio set. Back in the 20s, uh, a lot of houses, I'm sure, were happy to have something like this. They would have listened to it by putting a set of uh, telephone type headphones on these two terminals right here. And then they would have uh, played with all these dials and tuned in various stations. <laughs> 